So in this video, I want to talk a little bit about sentence variety. And we're going to talk about uh, two different kinds of sentences, a simple sentence and a compound sentence. Um, these are sentences that you write all the time, but just reviewing what makes a simple sentence and what makes a compound sentence can help us to write them more intentionally. So a compound sentence is a sentence that joins two simple sentences using either a coordinating conjunction, a conjunctive adverb, or a semicolon. And what compound sentences help us do is to create variety in our writing. They also help us to establish clear relationships between one idea and another idea. So if a simple sentence expresses one idea, joining that and sharing or illustrating the relationship between two simple sentences helps us express ourselves more clearly. Another reason it's important to correctly compose compound sentences is because it'll help you to avoid common grammar mistakes like writing fragments, which are incomplete sentences, or by writing run-on sentences, which is when you have more than one simple sentence that is connected but not properly connected. So we're going to take a look at some examples, and in this week's discussion board, you're going to be asked to create some compound sentences to describe yourself. All right, so we're going to begin by first talking about what a simple sentence is. Um, a simple sentence is sometimes referred to as an independent clause, or is oftentimes referred to as an independent clause, and it is made up of a subject and a verb or a verb phrase. Now, a subject is the thing in the sentence that does the action. It's the person, place, or thing in a sentence that performs the action. The verb is, of course, the word that is the action or demonstrates the action. And the verb phrase is everything that comes along with the verb that helps to describe how, when, or where the action is taking place. And that verb phrase is called a predicate. So all sentences are made up of subjects and predicates. So we have two simple sentences on the screen in front of us. The first one reads, Warsan Shire writes poetry. Well, in this sentence, Warsan Shire is our subject. She is the thing that is doing the action. The action in the sentence is writes. Writes is the verb. And writes poetry is the predicate or the verb phrase. So that is an example of a simple sentence. The second sentence, home, is about the experience of refugees. In this case, home is the subject. It is the thing that is doing the action. Is is the verb, it's a linking verb that is actually linking our subject to a description of the subject. So is is the verb, and is about the experience of refugees is the predicate or the verb phrase. So when we think about writing our own compositions, we want to make sure that we're using a variety of sentences. And we also want to make sure that we're illustrating the relationship between the ideas that are expressed in each of our sentences. And so one way that we can create compound sentences is using conjunct, uh, coordinating conjunctions. Um, the coordinating conjunctions are easy to remember because we have this kind of silly acronym that we use to um, remember it. And the acronym is FANBOYS, and it stands for for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. And each of these are simple words that we use all the time, but what they do is they illustrate a relationship between two things. So for example, the word and means addition. Right? We're going to continue moving in the same direction. I've given you one idea, and I'm going to give you another idea that is moving in the same direction. The word but suggests contrast or change, right? Here's idea number one, but idea number two is going to be in contrast with that. Or so is a word that shows cause and effect. Here's idea number one, and as a result of idea number one, idea number two has come. So we can take a look at how we create compound sentences using these coordinating conjunctions. If you look at the first example, we have Warsan Shire writes poetry, comma, and her poem Home is about the experience of refugees. So in this case, we have simple sentence number one, subject, predicate. We have a comma in our coordinating conjunction, and. 
And then we have another subject, her poem, Home, and another predicate, is about the experience of refugees. In the second example, we began class this week, but classes are online. Here again, we have uh, two simple sentences that are combined in the middle with a coordinating conjunction to create a compound sentence. So in this case, we is the, oh, excuse me, we is the, um, we is, I'm sorry, <laughs> we is the subject, began is the verb, began class this week is the predicate. Uh, classes is the subject, R is the verb, it's a linking verb again, and R online is the predicate. Both of those simple sentences are joined in the middle with a comma and the word but. So we're showing some contrast there. Yes, class began. On the other hand, class is online. So we use coordinating conjunctions all the time, but there is a way to elevate our writing a little bit, and that is to challenge ourselves to use conjunctive adverbs. Now, conjunctive adverbs can do the same thing. They can appear at the beginning of a sentence as a transition word, or they can appear between two simple sentences to create a compound sentence. And the conjunctive adverbs that we're going to focus on are the ones that are here on the right of your screen. We have the words, however, and nevertheless, which loosely translate to mean but, right? However shows contrast. Nevertheless really means something like, despite what I just said, here's another idea. But you can roughly, roughly translate to but. Moreover and furthermore are both words that show addition, and so we can translate them to and. And therefore, thus and hence are each words that show cause and effect, and so we can roughly translate them to mean so. So we look at our original sentence, Warsan Shire writes poetry. This time, instead of using a comma in the word and, we're using a semicolon, the conjunctive adverb moreover, followed by a comma, and then the second simple sentence. So Warsan Shire writes poetry, moreover, her poem home is about the experience of refugees. In the second example, we began class this week, semicolon, however, comma, classes are online. And again, this second sentence is just like you can replace however with a comma and the word but, they essentially mean the same thing, but we want to challenge ourselves to try to use new language and new words in our writing. Um, finally, in some cases you can use a semicolon alone in order to create a um, compound sentence. Uh, semicolons can be used to separate two simple sentences, but only if their meaning is really closely related. So taking a look at our first example, Moore Sandshire writes poetry, semicolon, her poem home is about the experience of refugees. These two ideas are very related, and so a semicolon alone is sufficient. If we look at the second example, classes are online, semicolon, I got a haircut anyway, in this case, the relationship between those two sentences is unclear, and so we need to add a coordinating conjunction, or we could add a conjunctive adverb in order to make that relationship clear. Okay, classes are online. I don't know why you got a haircut, um, but if we set up a contrast there. Yeah, classes are online, but I got a haircut anyway, so you're still concerned with what people may uh, may think of you or, or, or how they may see you, um, so you're getting dialed up for the, for the first day of school. So we want to make sure that we're only using the semicolon if the relationship between the two ideas is very clear. So in this last slide, I will show you just illustrates how to put together a compound sentence. We have, of course, the independent clause, a comma, and our coordinating conjunctions or our fanboys words, followed by another independent clause. Again, the independent clause is just another word for a simple sentence. Or you can have a simple sentence followed by a semicolon, one of these conjunctive adverb phrases, a comma, and another simple sentence. Or again, if the two sentences are simple sentences are very closely related, they can be combined with just an independent clause. So again, this week in the discussion board post, you're going to be asked to write a series of compound sentences about yourself using this middle format, the conjunctive.